Thanks for the uh, introduction. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to talk about Vue.js the right way today. But before we go on, um, just a bit about myself. My name is Ruben. Um, I come from Malaysia. This is my third time in JSDC. Uh, and in Malaysia, I am the CTO of Neuroware. We do things that are related to blockchain. So I am also the co-founder of JavaScript Developers of Malaysia. And uh, I have two cats of my own. So a lot of you here might not know what CTO means in Malaysia. Um, in other places, it is called Chief Technology Officer. But in Malaysia, it's just a cat taming officer. Right. But in any case, um, let's take a look at what we are going to learn about today. But before we go on, um, I have to say I love Taiwan and I love the weather. I just wasn't expecting it to be this cold today. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at all of you here and I see that you guys are wearing like jackets and all that. And I'm like, man, I need to, I need to borrow a jacket from one of you here. It's freezing. So, um, what are we going to talk about today? There are four things we're going to talk about. Um, today will be primarily a experience sharing session. Um, the, we've been playing around with the view for some time now, and we recently has a, have a project that we successfully converted to view. And we ran to a few interesting uh, scenarios along the way. So hopefully, through this, sharing session to be able to take away uh, some experiences that we have and learn to do it the right way for what we see. So uh, we're going to cover four things. First of all, we're going to look at what Vue.js is in a very high level uh, manner. And then we're going to take a look at what kind of applications are we talking about? What application did we integrate Vue into? And then we're going to talk about how did we manage to sneak view into our application, and finally, how do we do it the right way. So let's take a look at the first one. Vue.js. How many of you here are using Vue right now? Can I see a show of hands? Perfect. My job is done. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of us here have used Vue because it is simple. So, but before you go on, um, Vue, it's not new. It's not a new library, it's not a new concept. Uh, we're going to take a look at the brief history of reactive front-end framework first, and then we're going to look at Angular versus React versus Vue. And finally, we're going to uh, show you a bit of a demonstration of what exactly it is. Not by showing you a demo, but showing you how different uh, it is. So let's talk a little bit about uh, reactivity in front-end frameworks. This morning, we had a talk about uh, React, uh, reactive framework, reactive programming in general. So I won't uh, repeat a lot of what she said. But in general, React, reactive programming patterns are not new. Uh, in fact, it goes all the way back to the gang of four design patterns, the observer pattern. Excel, in fact, Excel is a good example of what uh, reactive programming can look like. Uh, a lot of GUI programs uh, adopt this general idea as well. So, little known fact, um, I myself, before there was Angular, I wrote my own reactive uh, um, front-end framework. It never went anywhere, <laughs> or just written it for fun. But there is a pressing need, even back then, even before we have Angular. Uh, a lot of developers have already realized that it's actually easier if we have something like a reactive framework to work on while we're doing JavaScript on the front end. So when we talk about reactive framework, uh, reactive anything, how exactly do they work? Um, how do we differentiate React, reactive, design patterns, sorry, reactive patterns from traditional patterns. So traditionally, whenever we work on the front end, uh, for instance, in this example, we have a text box 
that needs to send uh, updates to maybe a header and an HTML text. So traditionally, when we code, we usually would couple uh, the text box to all the elements that needs to be updated. That means that anytime you update a text box, you're pushing information to a set list of uh, recipients. For instance, in this instance, anytime you update the text box, we would push new values to the header as well as the HTML text. So this is how it looks like in code. Um, we have a header, we have a text, and then we have an input. And when the input changes, it calls a function called change. And within the function itself, we make calls to modify the elements in the page. Now, for those who are already familiar with Angular, React, or Vue, this might seem like something that you would never do because this is such a manual process. But unfortunately, before Angular existed, this is exactly how everybody is doing it. So, what was the problem with doing it this way? It's not scalable. Um, in fact, when we're working in a large team, when everybody have their own idea of how the front end should be coded, what usually ended up, up uh, sorry, what usually ended up happening is that what if we need to scale this up so that one text update updates more than just two elements? So usually this is what happens. People will start adding more and more stuff into one single function. And this is bad because um, all these elements in here, they become tightly coupled to your text box, which, is, which makes it incredibly hard for people to update or even replace your UI elements. Your JavaScript becomes extremely tightly coupled with your HTML and your UI in general. So this is where we start to look at how do we build our systems so that there's a good separation of concern. And this is where the React, uh, way, reactive way of doing things come into play. Instead of uh, pushing updates to your elements, what we do is we have an X number of elements listen to a uh, listen to the text box instead. So this way, uh, we can have as many uh, we can have as, as many elements to listen to a specific um, component as we wish, and we can add more in the future without severely compromising the code that we have. So. As all you know, Angular is a very famous framework that we're using right now. And um, it started out, it was released in October 2010, by, and it's currently maintained by Google. It, when it came out, it advertises itself as an all-in-one framework. But the problem with, uh, well, not exactly the problem, but the thing about Angular is that it is, it is extremely opinionated. It wants you to do things in a specific way. Uh, sure, it has comprehensive tooling, but when we started out looking at tools to, uh, to solve our problems, immediately we rejected Angular because, uh, because of the reasons you'll see later, but mainly because it is too opinionated. So, in May 2013, we have React. React uh, currently maintained by Facebook, it's kind of an antithesis of Angular. It's extremely modular. Um, it is also the first thing I realize about React, the first thing I know about React is that it focuses on performance. Not to say that it is more performance than Angular, but more of the fact that it has a bigger focus on performance. So at one point, when we were working on our systems, we thought about using React. But eventually we settled on Vue. Why? Vue was released in February 2014. Uh, it's one of the fastest growing community in GitHub. But the most important thing about Vue is that it is a progressive framework. This means that it is something that you can slowly integrate into your system without disrupting a lot of what's going on right now. Now, Here's how Vue looks like. 
Uh, this is the most simple um, example that we can come up with that directly maps to the example that we had just now. Remember we have the header, we have a text box that needs to update the other things. This is all the code there is to update all the to update those uh, the header and the and the and the main text. So let's see what kind of application are we looking at. What kind of uh, how are we going to integrate Vue uh, into it? So this application was a contract uh, contract work by us, and when we got this application, oh my god, we were like. This is a mess. I will show you what kind of mess are we looking at. So, it started off as something as simple as a um, MVC uh, web application stack. It's really straightforward. You have front-end code, HTML, CSS, and front-end JavaScript. And then you have the back-end code, which is written in uh, Node.js using Express. And then you have an API server. API server is written in a different language, which talks to a database. Well, so far so good, right? A lot of applications are written in the same way. However, <coughs> we realized after digging into the code that it's an extreme mess. Imagine there's one router file. It's not a very complicated application, but there's only one router file that has 3,000 lines in it. And that's it. There's no organization to its code. In fact, it got so bad that it has everything in it. It feels like somebody had the idea of using Webpack or some program to compress all the libraries that you used into one single file, but never bothered to check in the configuration into GitHub in the first place. So what we have is a mixture of jQuery, Bootstrap, all kinds of plugins, and um, it's just a huge mess. In fact, we have 40,000 lines of CSS. Just CSS alone, we have 40,000 lines. And we have 50 different files. The fun part about it is that of the 50 different files, they're all the same with minor differences. Imagine you as a developer, every time you want to make a, uh, make a change somewhere, you have to go through 50 different files and figure out what are the, smart, what are the minor differences in them all. So, Let's go through a checklist of things that they uh, that we we inherited, right? Number one, there is no test cases. Number two, there is no build configuration or any kind of tool chain available. There's no gulp. There's no npm. No nothing at all. So we have to figure out what exactly, uh, how exactly to run this, and how how are we supposed to compile all this JavaScript and CSS stuff. And then there are multiple versions of the same library. We just realized that different parts of the system uses different versions of jQuery. Wow. It's like, and, and what's even worse is that there is, no, there is no documentation on why are we using different versions of it in the first place. Every page is copy and pasted with minor differences, right? And then we realized that looking at the Git uh, commit logs, Realize that there are many developers that just copy and paste uh, code into it. So, this, all these mistakes are how we started off with. But what really, what really triggered us to use Vue.js was the last one. The client requested for a more interactive UI. Initially, we thought that it was just a simple job make your UI better, right? Sounds easy. The moment we pick up the project, the project, the first thing that came into our mind is, we should have charged the client more. <laughs> this is gonna be a headache, right? So we're looking at a complex UX. It's not as complex as um, you might think, because it's actually really, really straightforward. But the way the system was designed makes it complex in the first place. Now imagine you have three select boxes, right? You have the first uh, category, and then you have row, and then you have a year. First, you have to select a category. Depending on what you select in the category, your role will change. The data in the role will change. And depending on what you select in the role, your options in the year will change, all right? 
straightforward, it's like a waterfall thing in your select boxes. So looking at this, we decided, okay, this would be a good place for us to slot in view. We didn't want to do this the old way, using jQuery or here, writing our own JavaScript to manage all these things. We want it to be structured. This would be where we start, uh, where we start our battle. Okay. Now, how did we snuck view into this? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we're going to talk about how a simple view instance look like, and then we're going to show you. Uh, share with you how did we eventually remove jQuery, uh, how we turned the backend into an API server, and then how we eventually introduced view components and maybe some future plans, right? So, this is a simple view instance. In fact, when we started up, when we received the projects and we decided to use view, we didn't tell the client that we wanted to use view because Whenever you're dealing with a client and you want to introduce something, a structured framework like Vue or React or Angular, you can't just tell them that you want to use this framework. Because what would happen is, they would ask you, is it going to take more time? Is this a refactor? Yes, it is a refactor, but if you tell our client that we want to do a refactor, client will say no, they'll do a refactor, okay? So this is what we started off with. Uh, if you look at the top, the second line, there is a greeting message, welcome back, with a name, right? And at the bottom, we have a simple view instance uh, showing the, the person's name. The person's name is rendered through our templating system for the backend. So in essence, this is just a useless piece of code. But this useless piece of code allowed us to slot in Vue.js into the file system. All right. So the point is, with this useless piece of code, we got ourselves into the system. Smart, right? Uh, it's, 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 it's not. <laughs> that, that wasn't how we actually got Vue into the system. All right. So this is actually how we got into it. Remember the, uh, the, the select boxes that we wanted to do? That was our starting point with Vue. Um, we replaced this particular thing with Vue. That, and we'll show you later uh, how exactly we do it and why did we choose Vue in the first place. All right? But the point is, the original code itself has about 700 lines of code. And it was buggy. There was a lot of bugs in it. When we replaced it with Vue, the number of lines of code dropped to 30. It's not, it, generally it's not a good idea to judge whether something is good or bad by the number of lines of code it has, right? But I guarantee you, as a developer, it's much easier to read 30 lines of code compared to 700 lines of code. So, starting from there, within two months, we managed to convert all forms in the system to Vue.js, especially those that contain validation and select boxes. So that was where we started. We focused Vue entirely on forms, uh, nothing else. No fancy UI, uh, no animations or CSS or whatsoever. We started off simply by replacing what existed which was primarily jQuery-based things with Vue. So, I have to admit that in that two months, it was a painful process, but it was worth it in the end of the case, uh, in the end. Because when we used Vue in our, uh, in our front end, it wasn't just changing the front end framework. In fact, what happened in that two months is because we introduced Vue, we added test cases. And because of the way Vue works, we added more than 30 API endpoints. And from there, we started to deprecate all code and structure and clean up the system. And we, in fact, removed more than 10, 100,000 lines of code simply by removing all the duplicates that already exist. Right, so from here, you can see that we didn't start off with uh, 
trying to integrate fuel into the system. We didn't start off with wanting to refactor the system. We started off with trying to clean up some of the forms, some of the more complicated uh, UX elements. And we chose Vue. Eventually, our choice of using Vue, because it was so easy to use, it led us to removing a lot of things and cleaning up the entire system as a side effect. So, uh, with that, with the, with the forms replaced properly and fixed properly, we started to notice something. We started to notice that all our jQuery usage was to manipulate the DOM itself. I'm sure all of you here have experience with jQuery, right? A lot of us here actually use jQuery to manipulate simple things in the website. Things like changing your value or things like uh, changing the text of a button or things like that. So we realized that we're using jQuery to update elements, to update the form data, to activating and deactivating UI components. This was when we decided to remove jQuery altogether and replace it with Vue. This is how it looks like. Uh, for instance, we have a function called close model, which is self-explanatory. You have a model dialog box, and this piece of code just closes that piece of dialog box. So instead of doing that, we converted the entire dialog box into a view uh, piece of uh, code. So from there, all we need to do is change the variable show. Oh, we don't have a laser pointer. Uh, we just need to change the data, the property show from true to false to open and close the entire model dialog. So in two months, uh, after, after removing jQuery from our system, within two months, we, we started off with just one API endpoint, and we ended up with 30 plus API endpoints. Why is this, uh, why is this so? If you go to Vue's website, and you start learning Vue, you realize one thing. Um, there are, you realize that Vue is actually something that doesn't determine how you're supposed to use it. It's not like you're using React or Angular and tells you that this is how you're supposed to code in Angular or this is how you're supposed to code in React. Vue doesn't care. Vue just tells you that this is an instance and this is how you create reactivity in your dome itself. So because of this, we started, we realized that we don't have to uh, always use the traditional MVC method. In fact, we can keep a page there and use AJAX and API calls instead. So this allows us to create more than 30 plus uh, API endpoints um, in those two months. So the, the 30 plus API endpoints gave us really good separation of concerns between our front end and the back end. It also allows us to test easily, to test our systems in an easier way. So the, the additional thing that came with changing the backend into an API-driven backend is that the client eventually decided to launch a mobile app because we had an API server, which is good news because that means more money for us. All right. I'm sorry I'm, I'm, I'm giving you all these ideas of earning money just because you're using Vue. That's not the point. <laughs> Anyways, um, eventually the journey took us to a point where we realized that there are a lot of repeats, repeated stuff in our system. Things like model dialogues, select boxes with built-in searches, uh, counters, progress bars, all these things that appears again and again in the system. And just to show you how many of them are there, these are the numbers that we found. They are in the system itself. So looking at all these numbers, uh, we realized that it might be easier for us to turn some of our view, uh, view code into components instead. Now for those who are not familiar with view, view components are self-contained uh, modules. For instance, you can write a view component that, does, that acts like a select box with search functionality built in. Or you can write a component to perform it, to, to, to act like a counter or a progress bar, right? 
So this is an example that I pulled from the views uh, website. This is a uh, button counter. Every time you click on the button, it increase, increments a, uh, a number. So the top here is the component code itself. At the bottom, you can see that you can use the code as part of an HTML, uh, uh, sorry, as part of an HTML code. So this saves us a lot of uh, space, a lot of time when we repeatedly use it in our system. And this is one of our uh, one of our components that we repurposed and spread out all across the app itself. This is a select box with a search engine uh, with, a, with a special search engine inside there, and it's just that it's that simple, right? So with this, by, by converting everything into, into components and then reusing them across the code base, the code base is further reduced by 30 to 40 percent. So this is where we are right now in our application. We integrated Vue and it brought us so many benefits. What are we looking at in the future? We might look into integrating a state management store using Vuex, or even looking at Nuxt, uh, which is a more opinionated framework built on top of Vue. We are also looking at 100% API migration, so that our, our backend serves as a pure API server, and then uh, exploring progressive web apps uh, in the first place. Now, <clears throat> I'm done sharing uh, what we did. So let me share with you the insights that we found when we started this entire journey. So for those of you here that aren't using Vue, that you're still using an MVC traditional website where your templates is rendered in the back end, uh, if, there, are, there are a few lessons that we learned that if you want to change your traditional web app into something that looks like Vue, uh, that is Vue powered, there are certain things that you that we can share with you that would help you a lot. Now there are four specific lessons that we that we shared, uh, sorry, that we learned along the way. Uh, first is the benefits of having a progressive framework. Second is evaluate before you implement. Then we have an end goal in mind. And finally, refactor and develop at the same time. But let's look at the first one. Progressive framework. Vue.js markets itself as a progressive framework. Now the good thing about a progressive framework and what exactly does it mean? It means that it's supposed to be easy to integrate into your code base. It's not supposed to force you to use a specific paradigm uh, or do things in a specific way. So it's easy for you to slot it and change your traditional web app into something that's more reactive. So for, for us, like we mentioned just now, we didn't start off trying to refactor the entire system. We start really, really simple, just one single form. Once we manage to, um, once we manage to fix that form, we move on to other things. But we started small, started with something really simple. So if, you're, if you want to integrate Vue into your system, you can do that as well. Pick something that is extremely simple and straightforward and use view and convert it into a view uh, component or a view view reactive uh, pattern. Next, evaluate before you implement. We have to balance the costs of a paradigm change uh, versus paying off tech debt. Now what this means is that whenever you use view in your system, you're changing the way a developer writes code. You're changing how we think when we approach the front end. This is generally called a paradigm change. And paradigm change can be difficult because you have to learn how to use Vue in the first place. But using Vue allows you to pay off a lot of technical debt, a lot of things that we, we remove 100,000 lines of code by integrating Vue. So which one, there is cost and benefit analysis. Is it worth it 
to force developers that are working on the system to change to a new mindset in order to pay off the technical debt. That you have to evaluate before you implement it. All right. So in our case, we try to be practical. We didn't start off with changing the entire website into a Nuxt or a single page app or a progressive web app. We started step by step, incrementally. And have an end goal in mind. Even though we didn't start it off with wanting to change everything to view, we have an ideal uh, version of the app that we wanted. We wanted it to be a progressive web app. Uh, we wanted it to be 100% API driven. And we want it to be easy to learn how to uh, develop on. So when you have an idea of what you're working towards, it makes it easier for you to understand where and how to integrate uh, tools such as Vue into your uh, current system. Now finally, we encourage our developers to refactor and develop at the same time. Now a thing that it's hard to get our clients to understand is that refactoring is not a bad thing. In fact, we do it all the time. Whenever we write code, we write it in a tidy way. We separate the concerns properly. We, basically what it means is that we write code, we try to be a good software engineer. We structure our program the right way. We understand what it means to separate concerns. Now when you write code and refactor your code at the same time, it saves you a lot of, uh, it saves you a lot of time. And uh, this is especially important when you're introducing something new, like Vue, into your ecosystem. Now, um, show that sweet. <laughs> so this brings me to the end of my um, sharing session today. Uh, I'm sure all of you here have a lot of questions, and I'm sure I haven't, I haven't covered everything that I wanted to cover. So now would be a good time to ask questions. You have plenty of time. Yes. Um, I have a question here. So you just you suggested that um, view doesn't force developers to implement uh on that in a single way. But uh, I have do you think that it causes any problem because I like, uh, say one of these things Sorry, could you stop you for a moment? I will pass you the mic. I have trouble hearing. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. to implement things in a single way. And in other words, you can see different implementation that solves the same problem in the code base, like three, way, three different ways. And a common step a common step into Perl is that you have thousands of ways of doing one thing, and that is not a good thing. So do you have problem managing a team because people complain that, oh, we, why are we doing why are we solving the same problem with different ways? Or like the juniors, a special power you can come okay. and complain about this. So let me, let me rephrase your question if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, the question was, if Vue doesn't demand that you, have, you work in a certain way, how do you coordinate a team? And how do you manage people like junior developers that haven't a lot of experience? How do you standardize people uh, working on the code, correct? Was that a question? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, so before I answer the question, just so you know, I can understand Mandarin. <laughs> I pretend I can't speak because uh, my, my Mandarin is bad. I don't practice that much. But if you choose to ask, you, you can ask questions in Mandarin. I can, I can understand it. So anyway, so back to the question itself. Yes, uh, very good question. In fact, um, because Vue doesn't force you to work in a certain way, 
this means that we get to decide what way we can choose, right? So if we use Angular or if we use React, the way they work doesn't necessarily fit the way we work as a team, right? So because Vue doesn't dictate us that this is how you're supposed to write your systems, we get to decide, like, okay, our team has been doing this for the longest time. This is our standards, this is our conventions that we use. And we pick a tool that doesn't try to change what we're doing right now. So, in a way, it's more flexible. The tool itself is flexible, but our process, we can be strict. So that's the difference right there. Does that answer your question? Yeah, totally, thanks. Okay. Uh, is there like any other questions? So just a, just a reminder, this session doesn't mean that you can't write a uh, you, 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 you can't write a web application from ground up using Vue. Because I, I noticed that there are a lot of tutorials online that teaches you how to use Vue by building a web application from scratch. But not a lot of people have experience converting what they have right now to using Vue. So my advice to those who want to try out is just do it. Vue is perhaps the easiest framework to learn right now. And it's popular for a reason. So since it is this simple, there's very low risk of you introducing it to what you have right now. And it might start you off in the same journey as we did. Like we just wanted to add one simple, just change one simple form. We eventually changed the entire, all the forms in the system. We changed, not only we changed the forms in the system, we changed the backend as well. We added test cases. All these are waterfall effects that started with the decision to use view to change one single UI element. Any more questions? I heard that people that ask questions get a price or something. <laughs> yeah, in fact, it is. Uh, uh, oh, wait. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 was did we do a proof of concept in all three uh, frameworks before we start before we chose Vue as a as the tool that we're gonna use? And I must say that it's an extremely good question because this is exactly why we chose Vue in the first place. Because we didn't want to do the proof of concepts. Now economically speaking, right? Like, let's say that this is this is proper engineering that we have to test every library we come across. Unfortunately, we can't do that. Uh, when it, realistically speaking, we can't do that. We can't, we can't do POCs for every client project that comes us our way. Mainly because the client doesn't pay us to do it. We we are paid to do. We are paid to change a very simple UI. Eventually, we sign a contract with them to change more of their stuff and sneak more and more view stuff into their systems, right? But we start off with doing something really simple. So we took a look at Angular. We have people there have uh, experience with Angular. We took a look at React, and we realized that because the change was so massive, that the, the change that we have to do is so massive, it couldn't justify the cost. The risk was high, right? However, Vue was so simple to use that the risk was actually really low. It doesn't matter if, for instance, we finish changing that UI and then the, cl the client fires us, right? It doesn't hurt the client that much because it's just a very small piece of code that we managed to change. So, in a way, Vue being as simple as it is, is actually a very low risk uh, investment into a tool. And eventually, you can add more and more things to it, more and more structure to it. From a simple Vue instance, you move towards uh, view components, and from view components, you move into more structured frameworks like Vuex and Nuxt, right? 
So this is why it is called a progressive framework. It progressively add more stuff into your web app. And because of that alone, allows us to choose Vue as our tool without making POCs for the rest of the libraries. So might not be a very satisfying answer, but this is our reasoning at the time. Okay, if the stage has no other questions, then we will thank you again. Thank you very much, Ruben, for your time.